When you first log into ITA, you're immediately taken into the wizard. And the first question the wizard is going to ask you what it is that you are importing and how you want to keep track of things. So for most people, if you're, you're, you're importing through ocean shipments, you probably just want to keep track of containers. But there is some flexibility here. So uh, like if, you're, if you import lots of containers all on the same boat, for example, you want to just keep a track of the boat and it will lump all the containers together. You could do it that way or you know, bring things in through rail cars or trucks. You could, you could do it that way as well. So by default, you can just leave it at containers. And now we make some suggestions as to the type of things we would expect you to want to keep track of about a container. Um, but you have the ability to modify these too and keep track of new additional things as well. Um, you can say add fields or add tabs. So you're kind of customizing the, the things that you want to keep track of. I'm going to leave the default settings and just say OK, continue to preview. And then this will give you an idea of what the container information screen will look like with, with all those fields and those tabs set up. So let's say we're OK, I'll click Done. Now it's going to bring us into the main screen, which is the container information screen. So these are the columns that we've said we want to keep track of. So you can drill down into an individual, individual container if you want to, or add a new one by clicking on the plus button here. Um, if you wanted to get back into those settings to adjust either the the, the information that you're storing about a container. You do that from the Edit Update page. You can modify the columns that you see here by Add or Move Columns. You can swap out the logo. So if you want to sort of customize it for, for your own company, you can swap out that logo if you want as well. You can disconnect it or you can contact us. Um, anytime you're, you're viewing the container, the, the container information here, you can always export this list out to Excel by clicking on the Excel button here and it'll load it up in Excel and then if you want to, you can of course modify the Excel spreadsheet, um, run, run reports in Excel the way you, the way you normally would. Um, so let's say you wanted to search for all containers that are coming into New York, New Jersey. You choose which thing which column you want to sort by, let's say arrival port, and let's say New York. So it filters it down. Those are all the containers I have coming into New York. And let's say I want to view the additional details or make, make changes to the information about this particular container. So when I come in, these are all the fields that we've chosen we want to keep track of. We could, uh, let's say, add a bill of lading number or change the document status. Say we've now received the original documents. Um, add some additional comments, maybe the container's been held up in customs, we'll put it on custom hold. Um, and those, those are the, the information in, in general info here. Now the costing side is going to be our next tab. So when the landed cost is calculated, it's going to take the price from the purchase order times the quantity to come up with what your, your purchase price is. And then it's also going to take all these additional costs that you're keeping track of as well. And you can you can customize these in that settings like we were looking at before. But let's say we add $150 customs broker fee and $3,500 in ocean freight. It'll then use those in the calculation of that, that landed cost. Um, you can add new additional tabs for additional things you want to keep track of. And here's where you're choosing the specific purchase orders that you want to grab from, from QuickBooks Online. So in this case, I added these two um, POs to this container, but if I want to add more, I can just click on this plus button here, and then it goes, checks what purchase orders we have available in QuickBooks. And let's say I want to select that one, I just click Add PO Lines, and then it brings it into this container. Also, any attachments, if you want to upload your shipping documents, you can come in here, and uh, so you want to upload the bill of lading, the packing list, commercial invoice, um, container loading pictures, anything like that, just come in here and click plus. Now you can drag and drop files directly into here, or you can select files from your computer. So let's say I'll select that Excel spreadsheet, and I can put a description on that as well, and then it'll add it, it'll upload it, and add it to this list in here, so I can go back and, and view them later. One thing I wanted to mention back in the container screen itself, 
So these, this is a list of all the containers. If you want to see what's in the container from here, you click on that little arrow to expand it, and this shows you these are the, the items or the purchase orders that we've added to this container, and then the landed cost associated with each.